And we are back with another review of Big Brother 26. This is going to be like episodes 30, 29, and 28. 28, 29, 30. Because uh, I think tonight's episode was episode 30. And I did not review yesterday's episode because it came on like 10 o'clock or something. It was so late. And I didn't know it was going to be like that. And apparently next week's Wednesday episode is going to be the same way. So I won't be reviewing that episode either. I'll be reviewing the eviction episode and next eviction is double eviction so that'll be really really fun but let's start off with this review first of all I loved this week of Big Brother personally even though I'm not really happy with who got evicted not really happy with the veto winners but I love this episode like this this like these events like janky world basically I love this janky I really wish like I've said it so many times but I really wish I got cast I want to be on this season but I kind of I low-key kind of don't want to be on next season because this next season 27 are gonna have a hard time topping season 26 and I don't know if y'all can tell but I'm kind of catching the cold so excuse my voice but yeah season 26 has been so good I feel bad for season 27 because Y'all are going to have a hard time topping this. Season 26 is probably my new favorite season. I think I like it more than I like season 20. So season 20 will be my second favorite season. Because season 26 is my new number one favorite season. I love this season. I'm not really happy with T-Core leaving. I'd rather have been Chelsea. But it was still was a great, great episode. Uh, or week. So a lot of people said that this reminded them of Dire Fest. Or whatever it was called from season 20. What would that have been for? 24? Taylor season? Where they had half the house inside, half the house outside. This was way worse because, <laughs> first of all, it was the whole house. And I don't remember in that season if they had to deal with this extreme heat like they did in this one. But first of all, so Ainsley's out, Janky's in. Janky is a little kid robot or AI, and he's like, cool, do you guys like pizza? Yay. Do you guys like ice cream? Yay. How about we do that? Carnival, outside. Everyone goes outside, and they have to deal, they are outside for all week, seven days outside. They have a shower outside. They use them porta potties, which is gross because it's in the sun. They were dealing with extreme heat. Everyone's super hot. They're like, uh, putting their heads in freezers and stuff. The sun is out. Even this episode, like, it was so bright. It looked really good. It looked pretty because it was so bright where they were. But it's just like they've been out here all this time. Um, the I really love the HOH. It was an endurance comp. I don't know why we didn't get to see it on the feeds. But they had to hold a stick uh, against a marshmallow. I really don't know how this works. So they had to put it together themselves. But I like there was controversy because some people thought it was rigged. Because... My my question was, once you put the stick on a marshmallow, like, how do you back up? Like, you can't just, like, how does the marshmallow stay up for y'all to even put the stick on it? If you know what I mean. Because they were, they were pretty far away from the marshmallow. But whatever. The marshmallow. It wasn't an actual marshmallow, but y'all get the point. Um, this competition was amazing. It went on for 10 hours. I think the final count was 9 hours, 55 minutes. That's insane. Uh... And people stayed up. Like, they were just watching this. And Leah ended up getting the win. And this is where the controversy comes. Because people were saying, like, once she won and people were clapping, her marshmallow was still up. Like, it didn't fall. So they were like, what the? How is this possible? But people were saying, like, it can't be rigged because they put it together themselves. Which they did. But like I said, like, how did they get the marshmallow up to... If y'all know what I'm saying, y'all know what I'm saying. If y'all don't, y'all probably like, what are you talking about? But Leah won uh, the finals... It was Angela, Leah, and Cam, which amazing three choices, right? Uh, and then we see Angela say, all right, I'm just going to let one of y'all win. They made a deal. Uh, Rubina was number four. And then, like, t Core asked Rubina a question. And Rubina answered. And then she just, like, had a lot lost focus. It was to say something in her language. And Rubina dropped it. <sighs> I kind of didn't want Rubina to win because she would have went after, like, the safe bets. But... Like, I hate that T-Core left, so it's like, I don't know. Then it's down to Angela, Leah, Cam. And Angela gives it up. She says, one of y'all can win. I already got the letter, yada, yada, blah, blah. I got the experience. But she had already made a deal that whoever won wouldn't put her up. Angela was doing great, like, this this week. Like, she's done a really good job. But anyway, then it's down to those two. And Cam decides to say, like, he's ready to drop. So he's like, let's do it on one foot. 
Pause. <laughs> but they both stand on one foot and they hold the marshmallow up. And eventually Cam loses balance. Cam loses. Leah wins. Leah's a new HOH. So good job for Leah. She just won veto. Now she's HOH in this janky world. <laughs> Uh, she wanted to target the trio. Everyone told her to target the trio. That's what she decided to do. She put up Rubina and Chemo, but she kind of always wanted T-Core out. If you actually like see see what she was saying. Then we get to the v to the veto competition, and it was like a circle puzzle where you had to fit all these circles into a circle. Uh, I really liked this veto. I thought it was really really cool. I was about to say I would do horrible at it, but like with enough time, I feel like. Eventually, I could probably figure it out. I don't know if I could figure it out before everybody else. Angela Beast at this. Angela got it. She got the veto. And then Janky said that there's also going to be a Janky veto uh, for someone else to win. And Leah, whoever comes in second place. And Leah actually won it. I'm like, oh my god. Like, this trio, like the trio that everyone keeps talking about, they had a chance to win two vetoes with three people. They had like, and they still didn't win. So I was, that's why I'm just like, this trio is not very threatening. They're threatening in the sense of there's three of them, but they're not threatening in the sense of competitions. Like, we saw Rubino win one competition, and that's when she was competing against only two other people. We saw Kimo win one competition, and that's when he was competing against only two other people. The only one that actually won, like, a competition is T-Core, but even hers was, like, it wasn't that, like, impressive. No offense to any of them. I like all of them. <laughs> like, I wanted them all to stay. So, I just feel like Leah went off after the wrong trio, but she's really close to the other trio. Like, she's close to Cam. She's close to Mackenzie. She's not really close to Chelsea, but... And then we see this plan where she wanted to use her janky veto to take the other person off because Angela already wanted to take Chemo off. So, Leah's like, maybe I'll take Rubino off and I'll put Chelsea up. But that never really came to fruition because... Inside the end, Angela used her, her veto on chemo, and Leah had to play this game where she threw, it's a carnival game, she threw a ball with these heavy, against these hev, heavy, like, bottles or jugs or something, and, like, she got zero, so in order for her to use the veto, her janky veto, she had to win the game, and she did not win the game. Uh, but throughout the week, what we saw was T-Core in a very bad mood, unfortunately. She ended up, she came across as dislikable, not likable, because of how she was acting. She was down. She wasn't really happy. This is her first time on the block because Angela used a veto on chemo. And Leah put T-Core up in her place. I feel like the trio just didn't, they just weren't good game players. There was two vetoes in use. They should have really, really fought hard and, like, done stuff. They didn't. They did like Kimo mentioned that there was another trio, but like, why didn't Rubina push that? Why didn't T Core push that? T Core's just so caught up with Chelsea. She loves Chelsea so much. It's like she won't. Like, it was bad gameplay. Bad gameplay by the trio. They could have really. There was a world where they both. Everyone in the trio could have been safe after the veto. Like, they both could have been safe. And T Core could have not gone up, but they just didn't push it hard enough. Then we see the scene where. This has been going on for weeks, but Chelsea has a crush on Cam, and she's just so jealous. It's just, it makes her so unlikable. She's so jealous of Cam and McKenzie, and it's just like, leave them alone. Leave them alone. If they, if they want to flirt, if they want to cuddle, if they want to like each other, if they want to get in a relationship, show me. Who cares? They're, gr they're grown. If you have a crush on Cam, express it. Maybe express, tell him how you actually feel. And even if you do, he can make, if he don't like you, he don't like you. But that is kind of shitty, too. Like, hey, you're all over her, but, like, do you have feelings for her? Like, because I have feelings for you. Like, and if you do have feelings for her, like, I don't know. I guess it's a way to say things. Uh, I feel like I'm just not liking how jealous she is. It's Cam's doing nothing wrong. He's grown. He can do what he wants. And McKenzie, why is it he so, she's so mad at McKenzie? She shouldn't be mad at all, though. Like, <laughs> it, it's weird. Uh, but Leah pointed it out in her DR. Sorry guys, the camera died, or it didn't die, but the camera ran out of storage as we've seen in like the past like five of my reviews. <laughs> I really gotta clean this camera off. Every single time it runs out of storage and then I stand up and I just delete a few videos and I go sit right back down. I really need to just clean it all out so this can stop happening. But back to what I was saying, Leah clocked exactly what was going on. Cam, Cam and McKenzie are flirting. But Chelsea has a crush on Cam. We see Bedgate or Cockgate where she moved. 
cots. By the way, I said cots, not uh, anyway. Um, Chelsea moved her bed or uh, away from Mackenzie and Cam so far away. And then Cam actually is like, Cam is sweet. He's a nice person. He still was trying to make sure that him and Chelsea was okay. So when Cam went to go talk to Chelsea, like she was saying, like, oh, you're you use the women for this, and I'm not for that, and. Uh, people are looking at you and Mackenzie more. It's just, I hated everything she said. Because number one, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> He's grown. He can do whatever he wants. Number two, you want him to be, you don't want him to be all over them, but you want him to be all over you. And then also, she had mentioned that people are looking at Cam and Mackenzie as more of a pair than him and her. But my thing is, isn't that a good thing? Do you want to end up on the block with Cam? Or do you want Mackenzie to end on the block with Cam? Like, I'm confused. Like, I, I just, I, this this is so dislikable. This, I don't like this uh, from Chelsea. Like, jealousy is not a good color. And apparently he called her. He said that she was a jealous type. And she got mad at that. So... It's all weird. It's all, it's, I don't like it. Let that man live. Let him live. Let him enjoy his time. Off of that, we all know Chelsea has a crush. I don't know. I don't even think Cam like, Cam doesn't like her, but I don't even think Cam likes Mackenzie like that. I don't think Mackenzie likes Cam like that. I think it's just, you're in the house. Uh, and I honestly think Cam sees Chelsea as like a family member. And that would be really awkward if he was doing that with Chelsea. Target shifts to T Core. And this is why I said like Angela did great this week. Because Angela won like she could have won the HOH. She did win the veto. She wanted to get her relationship back with Chemo. She used the veto on him. She wanted the target to be T Core. She got the target to be T Core. She says that if she wins, she wants to get Chelsea out. Like she's doing everything right. I love it. I love what Angela's doing. Uh I don't think she's like super nice. But I wouldn't mind her actually winning at this point. Like, I wouldn't mind it. At first, I was like, no, absolutely not. She's not a nice person. I still hate what she did with, with uh, Tucker. Like, I hate that. And I just, I felt like she was annoying. She was crazy a few weeks ago. She still is crazy. Uh, but uh, she's calmed down a little bit, I will say. And she's winning. Like, <laughs> let's get to it. Um, so she got the house to flip. Like, Mackenzie wanted t -Core out, too. Cam ended up wanting T-Core out, and they ended up with, we got to the votes. Everything's still going on outside. Uh, first of all, the speeches. Uh, T-Core's was really sweet. She had, it was a basic uh, speech, but it was sweet. Rubina, well, she, was, she was a little funny in her speech, but it was still, like, a very sweet speech. They both, they love each other. By the way, T-Core and Rubina were going to vote out. Chemo, like they had already made their mind up that Chemo was leaving, but now Chemo's still there. But I feel like they're all three really close friends. It's just that's what they thought was gonna happen. Also, this is T Core's first time being on a block, so Leah is the only person in the house that's never touched the block. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought Leah would be doing so good now? Uh, also, Leah won the veto, the second veto, so Leah's won like three, <laughs> three, three challenges, like back to back. Uh, anyway, they go up to vote. And everyone voted T Core out except for Chemo. So it was by a vote of four to one. T Core was evicted. T Core had to walk through the house. She was she went out with a lot of grace and she hugged everybody, said she loved everybody, said she's rooting for everybody. She met Julie outside or on stage. Uh, her speech was really good. Uh, she said she would have used the veto if she would have wanted it. She would have used it on Chemo in hopes of getting people to keep Rubina. I believe her, and I think that would have been a, the smartest decision. But then she says she doesn't regret getting Tucker out. And I I feel like she just wanted to say, like, she wanted to be, like, politically correct with uh, no regrets. Like, don't ever want to look back. But, like, no, you definitely should have kept Tucker in. And <laughs> she had said something like, oh, it without them having that target attached to them. No. He would have been a target in front of them. <laughs> like, like basically, she was saying getting Tucker out was good for Rubina and Chemo so that they didn't have that target attached to them. No, the target would have been in front of them. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but then we see the HOH competition uh, in in the house. They're all in different rooms, and they're building a puzzle. And they got up, well, they're stacking candy. And they have up to an hour to lock in. They can lock in whatever they want within the hour. And when they have enough 
can whoever has the most amount of candy would win. And if two people have the same amount of candy, whoever locked in the fastest will win. Uh, next week is double eviction. We found that out, so that'll be really really fun. T Core's going to the jury house with Quinn. That's fun. And Zingbot will be here next week. That's fun. Wednesday's episode is super long. It's like 90 minutes. That's fun. I won't be reviewing it, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but in this competition, I don't know if it's actually on the live feeds right now. But before the episode went off, we saw, like, Angela was doing amazing. And Cam was doing, like, he had nothing on his thing. Like, Cam was doing the worst, and Angela was doing the best. If Angela won, that'd be cool because she's putting up Chelsea. So that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, who do I want to win now? Who's my favorite? Rubina is is she's back. Like I feel like I like Rubina a lot now, and I kind of like Mackenzie. Mackenzie and well, I kind of like Angela too. Cam doesn't do anything to make me dislike him. Remember, Chelsea is cool. She was once my favorite, but like she's just too much of an obvious choice to win. So that's why she's like a tyrant. Like, I, I thought about season 20, like, why did I dislike Tyler so much? And this is because he was so good. And I feel like <laughs> Chelsea is so good, so. But that's it, guys. That's it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media. And until next time, I will catch y'all later.